Okay, so we want to start developing this project for um, documentation for our CC. And so one of the first things we look at is the um, joinery, maybe starting with the, um, the kitchen joinery. And so here, all we have at the moment is some block models uh, done with model in place. And then you can see it's actually, you think of a funny name, desk is what it's been called. Um, and if you've been wondering if you can rename these things, you can. Uh, if you go into your families there, and I'll have to look to see where it is, but there is a way of renaming them. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but you, you can actually do that. It's a uh, generic model, so if you look into here, <coughs> down to there, and there it is. So you can rename them uh, if you just right click on this. I'd need to find the right one. Maybe I'll do it since I'm there, desk seven. So I'll right click there and rename, and let's call it uh, kitchen uh, one or kitchen bed one. There we go. So now, here we are. Uh, oh, and the type is still desk. So if we go to edit type, I know it's still come up somewhere else, but at least it's got the um, the name there that I've given it. And we have to go to the view and see there's desk and we can rename that as well. Um, so, okay, there's better loop. Okay, so again, it's been made with model in place, so when you select it, of course, if you just go to edit in place to change that, and it is simply an extrusion, which already has the correct height, probably, but I just wanted to check that. So, honestly, the way I would normally start this would be to have it at zero, so when you see it in 3D, at least it looks like a solid block, but then when you go to uh, put the cabinets in underneath, you would just change the extrusion start there to... Well, I'd make it 860 because uh, quite often the countertop is 40 mil deep and 900 is the standard height. Um, have you heard those people who talk about um, 950 or uh, other heights? There are some different heights. Some people think they're special and if they're taller, they need a taller bench. Um, that's great, except uh, all the appliances and other things are made for 900, so uh, it messes everything up if you use different heights. So I wouldn't recommend it. And I've seen it. And then, um, again, I've just finished that. Uh, just to show you that the problem that people often have with um, things made with modern in place is materials. So can you see here how, if I select it, there's no material option in properties. And if I go to edit type, which is the next thing people will try after looking in properties, still no material. The reason is, of course, we need to go to edit in place, and then we can select the individual extrusions, and that's when you get the material property. So if you're pulling your hair out, and it happens to most people when they first start with Revit, um, it's because of that, you need to go and edit the family, select the extrusion. It might seem like you're selecting it, it twice at first, but it's because there can be many solids within a family and they can all have different materials. Um, so I'll assign a material, but I'll show you as well how you can put a parameter onto this, which saves you going to edit and place each time. So if we put in a, uh, or find a laminate material, uh, here we are, there's a laminate. Uh, I'll duplicate it, just for the sake of it, and call it laminate, um, kitchen, even though I would, yeah, I would normally, yeah, let's call it, okay, we'll call it then. If I knew what colour there's going to be, I would put that in the name, definitely, but uh, I don't really know yet, so we go to appearance, and it's a good chance just to remind you as well, look out for the numbers there above the hand. When you see a number, that normally tells you you have to either go to duplicate or replace. So I'll go to replace so I can get a new material from the appearance library here and then go to plastics and can find a plain-ish colour. Uh, don't want to do anything too boring, but uh, well, let's just go for, well, red's a bit dark for the kitchen, even though red is a good colour for food. So let's go for red to start with and we'll adjust it. So of course we've got a new colour there and if I click on that colour swatch, we can fine tune that. Even though it'll be something completely different. 
um, we can always add a image instead of a color and that's a good chance to show you again where all of my material images are in my folder there we are. you've got the material images folder which is chock full of images made just for working with materials and in other words they're flat textures and so in Maybe the so this one's going to give us some good laminates. There's plenty we could use. Maybe we could have a look at furniture. No, sorry, that's got not much in it. Fabric. Yeah, that'll give us some okay textures. You can do almost anything with laminate these days. So let's get something that's kind of interesting, but maybe actually in stone, uh, we'll get some fake, yeah, fake stone sort of materials. Well, that's all that let's do fake marble. Alright, so I'll just grab one of these. And it's that easy to put a texture on. Um, so that's a tiled one, unfortunately. I'll find some better marble later, but just want to give you an idea there. And I'll change the finish to gloss. So, just make that colour a bit lighter. So that's my material done. And click OK. And you might then see. As usual, it drops off with solids, so you just have to go sometimes back and click browse and then OK to assign it again. And now that's, that's going to stay. I'll change to realistic so that you can see it has changed. And so I'll choose this next one, and then this time it should just stay. There we are. So I'll show you how you can put a parameter on, so if I select both of these with control, and this time I'll click on that grey button next to the material, and then click uh, new parameter, and we'll call it uh, bench material. Finish the model, and now I can select that bench, and if I go to edit type, We've got the material there, and that's like just going back each time to edit in place just to change the material. And so then to put in the cabinets, it's fairly easy with a layout like this. I'm just going to go to architecture, and then component, place component, load family, and as I always try to, if there's an option in the default library, use that. So in case work, then wall cabinets. We've got these basic cabinets. Now they're okay, oh sorry they're wall cabinets and so there are then base cabinets. So the wall cabinets are for upper level cabinets and these are for the, uh, the ones under the bench. So they're okay actually for a basic setup. I'm just going to show you uh, my library on the P drive, which a lot, of, a lot of which has come from these default libraries, so I'm just using the shortcut to go to that Levit library folder and then casework here and then domestic kitchen. And that is just a collection of the families that they gave out with the program over a few years, um, going back about 10, 15 years. Um, there's a couple there that I've made, I think, but not too many because this gives you most of the things you need. And so here, just got a few more selections, but notice they don't have a countertop, and that's what you want. So I'll choose one of these, double click. And then I'll just show you over here in properties, there are a few different types set up. So these have their own parameters set up to change the size. And there's already a 600mm and a 1000mm version of this cabinet. If you go to edit type, you can put in your own sizes. And so if you remember what we did with the window to make them all variable, this has all been done already. And they work pretty well. So notice the height's already 860, that's exactly what we want. And the depth is set to 600. That's another thing I should have mentioned. So you've got the 900 uh, height for benches as the standard. And then for the depth, I know you'll sometimes hear 550. If, uh, well that, that is, that's, what, that's one of the standards if you look in the, the books. Yep, it does say 550 or 600. They're the two standard depths. 
but yeah, 600 is, is much better because for fridges and most appliances, 600 is, is the standard. Yeah, that's right. For, for fridges, if they're not made for a 600 bench, yeah, you do need more absolutely. Yeah. But if you can get the 600 fridges, they're, they're good. And stoves and sinks, yeah. Uh, they're definitely all made for 600 these days. So, um, so that's it. So if you click OK, and then, oh yeah, so you've got the plinth depth there. That is the, um, the setback of the kickboard. Yeah. And then the height here, that's actually not standard. So 100 is the standard for um, the kickboards. So while you're at it, you can always change it. You want it? I think that's too high. Change it. So click OK, and then we can place these. And if you're using the flat pack things, then you need to um, have them at a standard size usually. So if I click to place it, it's disappear under the bench top. So I'm just going to change the graphics to wireframe, and we can see that outline there. And then uh, either place a new one or simply copy it. So you can see how easy it is. And this is how they build the flat pack ones. So there's a lot of unnecessary materials in there. We've got the double up of the blade between these, or the carcass between the cupboards there. But of course, it's the cheap way to manufacture, so it still ends up being cheaper than the old way of building it with the minimum materials. So there we are. And uh, so for the the lip or the overhang of the bench top, uh, it was done historically with a with a pretty substantial overhang quite often. Well it depended. Um, if you go back to the really early kitchens, people think they've been doing kitchens like this forever. But they actually only go back to about the nineteen fifties. 40s, 50s. The if you see any old 1930s and 20s kitchens, they were really different and really stripped back and, and quite minimal um, and very uh, utilitarian. And uh, and then the earlier, like the 19th century ones, were you wouldn't even recognise them as kitchens. Um, so the the 50s kitchens, that's when they started building them the way we do now. And uh, and but that for a while they did have the you know the overhang with the benches, but now they're going back to having them more flush. So it's up to you, as I'm saying, with that overhang. Depends on the sort of the style of kitchen you want, whether you want much of an overhang, and you can't even do them flush. It's not the most functional, but it looks it gives you a look that you might want. So that's up to you. Um, you can even and you can definitely do them squared off like this. But I'll show you then how you can put in a, um, a rounded, um, what's the word, edge. That's actually what they call it, it's, uh, edge moulding. Um, is, is what they put around these to, to round that off. Uh, it seems as a bit of an ugly thing uh, sometimes, especially the cheap edge moulding that you can get. But, uh, but sometimes it can be good, especially with stone benches, sometimes it's, it's really nice actually to have a bit of moulding there. So just going back to the um, the bench top, I'll go back to the uh, floor plan there, so I can see my bench top from above. Back to edit in place, and I'll use uh, sweep. Let me just have a look at modelling again. Sketch path, and then well you can see my cabinet sticking out a bit there. We'll come back to that. But I'm just going to draw around the front of my bench top, all the exposed sides. And then I'll finish that and then go to uh, see what sections I've got there. Yep, so this one here should be right. I just want to see what that's called. Yes, of course, not going to give me the name because of this template being the system I'm using. Uh, anyhow, I'll figure it out. So I'll go to Edit Profile, and it's going to tell me I need to change views. Uh, so Section 1.1 uh, is the one I want. And then I'm working uh, behind this uh, wall that we can see there, so I'll just change the wireframe so that I can see where the path is. So that's 
so I need to look at the objects that I've made and it's a bit difficult to tell exactly where it is. I'm just going to go back to the ground floor plan. So you can see there, that's the, the plane that I want to be drawing on. So I'm going to cancel that. Uh, oh no, so I don't want to cancel the sweep. Uh, I just want to cancel the profile. Oh yeah, that's right. So I'll cancel that and say yes. Yeah, that's right. So it said that I was going to discard the sweep, but actually it was just discarding the profile. I know that's yeah, just the, uh, the way the software uh, comes up. Um, and so then I'm going to go back to the create tab and draw a reference plane along the edge of the bench there. So now I'll go back to select profile and then edit profile. Back to my section. And then back to wireframe. And it should show me the reference plane, except it's hidden in this view. So I've got to go to the, it's a bit annoying, go to the view properties, edit type, oh sorry, not edit type, edit the visibility and just turn the reference planes back on. That's actually why I couldn't see the, uh, the profile as well. There we are. So now I've got both. So that normally uh, wouldn't be as difficult as I made a look because this profile symbol should have come up as well. But because reference planes were hidden, in that view, we couldn't see it. But we can also see the reference plane I've drawn, that's just the line sticking out underneath. So that's all I need to be able to draw my um, edge profile. So using the line tool, I'll just draw along, that's the edge of my bench there. And notice the line weight is uh, making it hard to, to see what I'm doing. I'll just thin lines to turn that off. And then I'll just draw an arc from top to bottom and just bring it out slightly from my edge. So that's it. Tick's finished. And that's my profile. So if you can see that one, it's um, obviously got the thin lines. If I turn thin lines off, oops. Ah, it's still got the thin lines. When I finish it, it'll go back to the ones there we are. So I've been back into my 3D view and there's our nice edge profile. So I'll maybe repeat that but this time I'll set up some views to make it a bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm a bit slack with that because I've, I'm used to just doing it um, with the views I've got but uh, to make it a bit easier to see I'll put in a new section next to this bench. I know it would have been confusing with all those other things in the way. So here I've drawn a section next to my bench. I'll go and open that view and then select the bench top, edit it in place and then I need to go back to my ground floor plan to draw the path. So now I can go to create, sweep, sketch path, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle from my path around the top of that bench. Finish it, and then here you can see that the profile plane has gone to the top edge of that path, uh, which would be fine, except that I want to draw in that section that I've just made. So that profile, that, that plane, is set automatically. It gets set to the, the first uh, edge that you draw for your path. So that plane there, you can see, is perpendicular to this section. And that means if I was drawing on it, it's like we're looking at a piece of paper side on. So I wouldn't see anything on that plane. So I want to move the plane just by dragging it. It should move. Sometimes you, I think you've got to go to um, sketch path. There we are. And now I can hopefully select that plane. And there we are, so I can drag it. So now it's like I've picked up my piece of paper and it's now parallel to my section. In other words, I'm looking at the piece of paper so I can see what I'm drawing on. Or 
looking at my screen, whatever 2D object you want to think of. So that now, when I go to the section, uh, and I'll finish this path again so that I can do that. So I'm just going to close this plan view. That's another good little trick. Okay, if I close the plan view now, it goes back to the previous view I had, which was the section that I wanted. So then notice how we can see it as a cross. So that's my plane. If you only see a line, then you're looking at it side on. But if you see a cross, then you're looking at it front on. So now I'll go back to, and this is another good trick, when the edit profile button's greyed out, you just need to click select profile. Then you can go to edit profile and draw the, uh, the shape. And again, it's just a line with an arc, but it's a bit hard to see it at this scale with that line weight. So I'll go and turn thin lines on again and then draw my arc. And honestly, no joiner or no, no cabinet maker is going to sit down and take the measurement off your little arras. They're going to get a, a strip of plastic that's the size it is. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you don't sure this is the exact radius that they're going to build. Um, it's not a bad idea if you know what it is. But, um, but again, if you're just using the standard uh, moulding, drawing it by eye is, is fine. So that's my profile. And I'll finish that, and that's finished the profile. I've got to tick again to finish the sweep. And that then again projects it all the way around the bench. So, back to my perspective view. And we can see it's made it, but if I go to realistic, of course it's not got the material that I've set to the bench top. So now I can select both of those sweeps, go to um, the material here. I'm not going to bother assigning the material, I'm just going to click on that button next to it and choose the same parameter I made for the rest of the bench. And that's done. So I'll, uh, I'll finish that and then we can continue on with the cabinets. So back to the ground floor plan. And there was a method to all of that because now if I go and uh, continue doing my layout, then we can have a look at how you can adjust that sweep depending on uh, the changes to the cabinets. Also this bench top, which I didn't make, somehow that's not sitting on the wall. So again, that's a good chance to well come back to that, but we'll adjust that as well. Uh, so I've got the built in there. Uh, so the uh, the base cabinet. So now maybe I want a corner cabinet. So I'll go back to component, load family, and ah, oh, now it's doing it. I thought that was a. Uh, so notice how it's remembered my folder. Have you seen how normally it goes back to the metric library? So this is a 2019 2019 change. But they put the patch on in here. They must have done it over the over the week. Yeah, yeah. So we're up to version yeah twenty eight point three. Awesome. So it won't crash as much when you use pick lines. Yep, that's a nice thing. Uh, and uh, and it remembers the folder that you're in as well, which is another really nice thing, um, which you'll see with twenty nineteen as well. So so here there's a, a corner cabinet. So I'll, uh, I'll place that in there. The graphics isn't the same with all of these. So notice how this one shows the, uh, the covered doors and things like that. So we hide the wood plan anyway. So that's not a big deal. But I can just place this and then you can see, well, does that really make sense uh, with this bench top? And uh, so, well, probably I think the most logical thing there would be to make this part of the bench deeper if that is going to be you know a breakfast area or something like that in reality maybe it would be yeah that probably makes sense so um so again it's a good chance to go over uh adjustments now to that sweep um obviously continu continue adding cabinets but then if we come back to the bench top edit in place and i'll start with the original extrusion so i can select it there of course but otherwise, if you try to get it where the sweep's going, you might need to just use tab, 
to get the original extrusion, edit extrusion, and then just use your judgment for the depth there. But if you keep it as a you know, round number, that's always good, 900. It's actually quite deep. That would um, probably be good though if you want to have some space under the bench there. Um, so I'll finish that. And then while I'm at it, I want to check that the bench is up against the wall. Even though we're going to have to, <laughs> when we go and do the splashback, we'll have to come and uh, have a look at that again. But, well, the splashback would go to the um, top of the bench quite often, so that's okay. Uh, so I'll just check if I go to edit extrusion that it is, yep, 600. So instead of editing the extrusion, you can just move the whole thing. Watch out for that. When you move things made with model in place, you might have seen sometimes they go out of position altogether once you finish it. But with things like this, if you're just moving an extrusion that's been made from the um, from a level, extruded upwards, you can move them around pretty freely. But things that have been made in different planes are the ones that will start <coughs> disappearing off into the into the distance, and you just need to think about the way the planes are set up. And if you find that happening a lot, think about using a load of a family instead of a uh, mod in place one. So anyhow, I've moved my whole extrusion, but now of course it doesn't line up with my sweep, so I'll select that and I'll start just using move and snap to the corner and then move that back to line up with my bench top. But now of course I want that to extend out to follow my bench. So I'll go to edit sweep and then to change the path, it's not sketch path, so it's not edit path, it's still sketch path. To go and work with that, and I can then just drag this, drag that edge over to the edge of my bench, or use a line, and um, you know, I can finish that, finish again, and it just extends my edging around that part of the bench. So again, finish model, and starting to look a bit better. It's also good to check here the way things line up because you saw hopefully before with the um, the heavy lines on, uh, oh it's missing now, but before the um, edging was there you might have seen that the dashed line was sticking out. So it might have looked like the bench um, didn't line up with the edge of the cabinets. But that was actually the line weight of the cabinet sticking out. And for some reason they, they have that set for the cabinets to use this heavy dash line. But you normally just hide the cabinets in plan anyway see that. And, and same here with the doors, you don't want to see the doors in plan, so you just hide them. You don't need to see it in plan at all. And of course we can bring our chairs out. We're not doing decoration, so you probably don't need to do too much about um, the furniture that's not built in. But I'll leave it there for now. We'll get rid of that later. And back to my 3D view. Yeah, it's starting to look like a real kitchen, but of course this cabinet isn't the same type as this one. So we can see how much can be done with properties, and this one of course doesn't have the same parameter set up for the kickboard. So you'd have to go and adjust that, and it's a good chance to go over parameters if you want to try that. You can have a look at it, I'm not going to go too far, but oh, forget the constraints, I'm just going to click OK there. And then, um, so you can see there the kickboard. I won't go as far as changing the handles, even though that could be done, but I'll just show you very quickly, this is an easy one. If you go into the um, front view here. Right, so they've got a um, dimension already set there. So we can just select this, change that to, oh, now it must, must be locked. So that one you can see when I select the dimension, it's got a padlock. So we've always got a have a look at the way the family's made, unlock that, and then maybe I'll, um, well I'll do it the way I showed you before, I could select the dimension and change that number, that would work, but so it's adjustable in the future, we can always select the dimension, add a new parameter, and call it, uh, well I'm going to call it the Australian Lake Kickboard, not plinth, and um, that's it. And so now, I don't even need to select the reference plane, I can just select that dimension, type in the new height. 
but then notice how the person who made this didn't tie everything to that plane, so you can always then just manually do that yourself. Doesn't take very long. So I'll check the other elevation and see if it's all come up. Yep, looks pretty good. There we are. Okay, so now I can, I'll save that file so that it's going to fix the one in the library. And it's coming up lead only, so if that happens, just give it a different name. Base corner. Uh, so I'll load back into project. Oops. Okay, so because it's got a new name, I'll go to my 3D view and I have to select that and then over in properties now I can choose the new family. So now the kickboards should line up, but this one, ah, it's set. Yep, do you know why that's happening? Different host. So the way this floor is done, it's actually right. Even though there are different ways of doing it, you can do the tiles up to the benches, believe it or not, and that's the way some people do it. Um, usually through retro fitting, but uh, in this case, the tiles would be under the, the benches because it's a new build. So I'm going to select this, these benches, and then go to pick new host, and choose this higher level floor. And you can see then that the uh, the doors line up, but also the way that the um, kickboard is done in this family is a bit different, so you'd have to bring that back. And again, these are all the little things you need to take care of to get the kitchen details right. But again, it's not, not that much work. Um, and then the final thing is the materials. I'll let you try and do the um, kickboard depth yourself. Uh, but then if I go to edit type here, I'll see if there's a material parameter. And we can see this one here obviously has it. So I'll select the previous one, go to edit type and just check the name of the material it's using, which is called cabinets. So now I can select this one, edit type, and uh, find that cabinets material. And of course, you know, you can always search up here, so you know, yeah. So it's starting to come together. And, uh, so you just repeat the process for the cabinets under this bench. And uh, that should be enough, I think. Having oh, and then don't forget the overhead cupboards. You should have overhead in most kitchens. Um, now, if you want to do shelving, then often the easiest way is to model that. They're often custom units, essentially, and they're just extrusions, rather than trying to use families. You'll find some okay families with shelving, but often it's better if you model it. And then don't forget your appliances. So, so you all know everyone's spent a lot of time in, in kitchens usually, so the three appliances for kitchens. Um, Pretty much, or si yes, oven and stove I think off together usually, but yeah, you can think of them separately if you want to do an upright um, built-in oven, that's not a bad idea. But yeah, so stove, sink and, uh, and fridge. Yeah. So that's really important, even for DA that, that should have been in there, but that's fair enough if you didn't have it. And uh, so, yeah, so then those things, and maybe I should show you one sink just to go over the cutout, and that's probably a good place to finish. I don't go to all of them. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy, it doesn't take long. Um, yep. And then, uh, okay, so in the, uh, the Revit Library folder, It'll be in plumbing fixtures. We'll have heaps of sinks. So we'll choose a decent one, maybe a three by one. And so with this, maybe we'll have the stove on the island so the, the sink can go over here. Something like that. And then I'll go to wireframe just to position it over the. Um, over the cabinet, you don't want the bowl going halfway through one of your sides. Uh, even though this is, well, it's a big sink. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could make it work, but you don't want to have to. So, go and have a look at this edit type. 
it's got the width set up as a parameter. And so we can duplicate this and make it uh, even 900. Okay. That'll do. Um, so that position should be alright. But then, of course, if we go and have a look at that in 3D, you can see it. And, well, it's a good chance to check the height, but then, even more importantly, it's uh, not cutting through the uh, bench top. Oh yeah, now, sorry, I'm going to check what's happened here. So is that I forgot to factor in the, um, the floor thickness for my counters. So you can see there, it's, it's pretty good. This sink has picked up that 20 mil tile floor. So here, of course, that's the thickness of the floor, 20 mil. So the sink's right. The sink is lifted up 20 mil from the bench. So I've got to go then back to the... Um, uh, Top, edit in place, and we can set the the work plane to be 20 mil higher, but then that would be a bit of work. So probably easier just to type in uh, the height, make that 880, and make this one 920, and then we could do the same for this one 80 and 920. And then the profile of the suite needs to be adjusted. Um, great thing about the new versions of Revit is you can do all this in perspective. It's just a simple change like this, fairly easy. Edit suite, select profile, edit profile, select your shape, click move, click a point, and then just make sure it's going in the right direction. I'm going to turn, uh, well actually it's not going to go in the direction I want because, uh, yeah, it's confused. Yeah, still not perfect. It does work normally, but because of the angle of my view, it'll be better if I go to a new section. So it doesn't really matter which section, as long as you can see the profile. So I can select it there and then move it up 20 mil. And same with the other one. Again, edit sweep, select profile, edit profile, find the profile. I know, I know. Well, they're easier, yeah, but I mean, for um, that's right, yeah. For some things, it's nice to have the rounded ones. Yeah, it's up to you though. If you want to do square, that's fine. Yeah. 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 And uh, then. Oh yeah, so that's that's all okay. So what's this here? So I'm looking at something else. Uh, don't even think. Let's just check in perspective. So I've done something stupid there. So let's just fix that. Oh here, this is where Revit sometimes gets in the way. It's gone and uh, if you look at that, it's changed my profile. It's kept it joined to something that I don't want it to, so I'll have to delete that and just draw that arc again. It's one of those things that you have to watch out for with Revit. So now, there we are, that's right. Okay, so coming back to perspective view, now things should start lining up better, and finally the um, sink sits on top of the bench. So to finish that off, now we've got to cut a hole in the bench top. So back to the ground floor plan, head in place. And you don't have to cut the hole the same shape as your bowl. So I'm going to select the extrusion, edit extrusion, and just draw a rectangle underneath the sinks. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I want, yeah, but I mean, we're not making it the way it will be built. So no one else is going to see this part. So uh, yeah, no, the um, the recess one thing would cut out, of course, yeah, more accurately because you're going to see the cut out, absolutely. Um, so that's it. Yeah, no, the undermounted ones are beautiful actually. Um, my favourite kitchen in the world is that, and uh, 
Yeah, so war cabinets, probably don't need to show you too much with those. Um, showed you where they were, and uh, so you can work that out. But, uh, mm. Casework, kitchen, he has um, wall mounted cabinets. And there are some okay ones in the library. Have, yeah, glass doors and other things. I just want to try and get them to line up with your base cabinets if you can. I don't always need to, but it's a bit neater. Just copy them across. There is a standard for the heights, if you're wondering. Uh, sometimes I have to think about it. It's a round number, so there's 900 and then I think it's 1500. Yeah, it is. So it's 1500. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. So here, because we've got that tile thickness, we'd have to add in uh, the 20 mil. So here they've done it 1550. Um, but it probably should be 1520. But yeah, 30 mil is not going to matter too much. Yeah. So. Um, so if you model it that way, then when you do your joinery details, um, everything should uh, just happen automatically. And so here, if we're going to have the stove on that island bench, you can get range hoods that, um, uh, that go down, so you don't always need them to be overhead. You can get them uh, built into stoves these days, that's pretty, pretty standard actually. And, uh, they're just as good as the overhead ones mostly because if the overhead ones don't have an external exhaust, um, it just gets recirculated. Yeah, and that's what the ones that are built into the bench usually have as well. Um, maybe you want to allow room for things like a dishwasher, as well as uh, you know the fridge, of course. But the fridges um, you can just get from the library. So this one is a pretty ordinary. 2D fridge by the look of it, or is it just a detailed fridge? It's not even a full fridge, so let's get rid of that thing and get a, a real fridge. And so you'll find those in specialty equipment and then domestic. Uh, that's a pretty limited one, maybe this domestic folder has a bit more. There we are. And this is one thing where that tube library is great. So Max has sourced stuff from everywhere, and if you have a look in there, I'm sure he will have dozens of mm. pretty good fridges. Those are where the two libraries will be. Um, and you should actually put things like microwaves in as well. They're part of the building contract. Well, microwaves, borderline, but all the other appliances are, even if they're not, not built in, they're, they're part of it. Uh, not the mixers and things like that, but a lot of our kitchen equipment definitely is. And yeah, fridges, I can't really see them. I thought I saw a heap before. Oh, this will do. Yeah, good big fridge. I hate big fridges, so they That's huge. Okay, this is a crazy American thing. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I like the ones that aren't too deep, but I like the wide ones as well. So, yeah, this is a nice one because it's got the adjustable... Um, depth at least. So if you can try and get them to be 600 and then make it a bit wider. I'm not going to bother putting in a new name. But the trick with these is to look up the catalogue. Um, Harvey Norman, even though they're pretty terrible for some things, they have a pretty good range of uh, fridges. Not a great layout, but it's serviceable. I will live with it. Sorry? No, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, it'd be nice to put some uh, overhead things over the fridge, maybe enclose it a bit, see what you can do. But maybe it's a chance to try out some design ideas as well. You can do some different kitchens. This is probably all things you'd be pretty comfortable with, I think, all of this. And then you can use exactly the same approach for bathroom vanities, built-in desks, built-in cupboards. 
all of those things that are built in pieces of furniture, you have to document those. So you may as well model them in 3D since they're so easy to make with extrusions. And uh, yeah, should do it. If there's anything else can be done. No? Yep, sure. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll just use that.